Give us faith in you that never ends. So we can be sure of life with you forever. Amen. Thanks for coming on.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. What's happening? Where is God? In what can we put any hope? These were the questions being asked by God's people in Judah in 586 B.C., the setting of the Book of Lamentations. <clears throat> like today in America, it was a traumatic time, a time of religious, cultural, and political upheaval. After years and generations of unfaithfulness and doing almost everything possible to make God angry, and in spite of God's amazing patience and mercy, finally Judah felt the heavy hand of God's divine judgment. The Babylonian king, Nebuchadnezzar, had conquered and laid waste to Jerusalem, and God's earthly dwelling place, the beautiful and magnificent temple of Solomon. The inhabitants of Judah were dragged off into exile, and their religious rituals were disrupted. This divine judgment could have been avoided if the people had noticed God's patience, had obeyed the message of his prophets, and had returned to him in obedient submission and faith. But they didn't. So their punishment was self-inflicted by their spiritual stubbornness and indifference. Jeremiah the prophet was caught in the middle of all this. He had heard the title, The Weeping Prophet. His heart ached over the people's rejection of his message of warning in the midst of their national demise. As Jesus did centuries later, right before his entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, Jeremiah mourned over the city as he viewed the religious and moral disintegration of God's people. Yet in his grief, Jeremiah also speaks words of hope, seeking to rouse their hearts to repentance and faith in the God of hope. Today's Old Testament reading is yet another startling example of God speaking clearly to what is going on in our lives right now. Will we hear him speak? Let's quickly review some decades of trauma. Almost 23 years ago, on 9-11-2001, an earth-shaking event took place, and many were asking, what's happened? Where is God? Is there, in what can we put any hope? But those questions only lasted a few weeks, and things got back to normal. Church, uh, the fears eased, and church attendance slipped back to earlier levels. That event had signs indicating that it was coming that were mostly ignored. Nine years ago, a Supreme Court ruling on marriage swept aside God's clear directive for the institution that he had set in place. That sharp, startling change was also preceded by a long and determined effort to change perspective. That deception was blindly accepted by a majority of our culture. I hardly need to mention the rapid changes since then. The denial of God's clear standards of gender identity, an inconsistent economy, rising threats of war and terrorism, and so much more. Many more items have been added to the list of grave concern, causing Christian people to ask the question, what's happening? Where is God? In what can we put any hope? Only God knows for sure what the future holds and what these developments will mean for churches. Clergy and churches who hold God's word as the final authority 
may well be a type of Christ. We know that attitudes change quickly, and a few are relatively unaffected and certainly not disparate. But in our increasingly divided society, many are disheartened and raise those anguished questions. We have received a stark reminder to put our hope in God rather than earthly princes and institutions. Meanwhile, we must remember that life goes on, and there are people around us, even with us, who are facing their own private and personal traumatic time, whose minds are filled with troubling questions, who need to hear that God loves them and is there for them, that he offers hope amid devastation. I'm thinking of those with severe illness, the lonely and imprisoned, and families affected by brokenness. If we would take time to think how we might react if those situations were happening to us, we might be more ready to welcome Jeremiah's words in our text. As we think of others who need our Christian reassurance and comfort, we do well to follow St. Peter's urging. Always be prepared to give an answer to anyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Our text tells us what to say as it proclaims a God of mercy, grace, and forgiveness. Regardless of what our present situation is like, we can confidently say with Jeremiah, the Lord is my portion. But when we look realistically at what life is like in this fallen world, we have to say that things are far from perfect. There are disasters in life, regardless of whether our vision is limited or all-encompassing. Or personal trials, which also affect the family. There are disasters in the Christian church as members and leaders are suddenly taken in death or fall victim to temptation, which compromises their witness and wrecks their faith. Nearly every spring, we hear of areas hit by natural disasters, such as tornadoes or widespread flooding. Evil acts perpetrated by troubled individuals seem almost routine. Worldwide disasters come from nature, from traumatic, from tyrannical leaders whose blind ambition threatens peace, and from the rise of false religions that despise human life and lead their followers into eternal ruin. Some disasters are caused by our own evil behavior. Others are caused by evil deeds of others. Driving while intoxicated can result in accidents, injury, and death for both the driver and innocent victims. Sins against any commandment affect innocent victims. Unborn children who should be cherished are often devastated by fetal alcohol syndrome by the deadly choice of abortion. A young person who is ridiculed for standing solid in their faith and not compromising their Christian values knows how Jeremiah felt. And God can use those situations for good. In such circumstances, the advice of Jeremiah is helpful. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. Let him sit alone in silence when it is laid on him. Let him put his mouth in the dust. There may not be hope. Let him give his cheek to the one who strikes him. Let him be filled with insults. No. No. Sometimes we suffer as Jeremiah did no. from people's reactions to our Christian witness. As we remain faithful to what God the Creator says about marriage and 
transgender, we are likely to be labeled as narrow-minded and bigoted. When we suffer disgrace and persecution for the Lord, the best response is to refrain from angry reaction and retribution. Instead, we patiently offer the truth of God's word and real compassionate love to those who disagree with us. <laughs>
God cares about what happens to us. He knows our pain as he watches us react to the tragic events of life. God intentionally intervenes at times and instructs us about life's realities so that thankfully we see and believe the truth that he is there for us. God's steadfast grace and love, his mercy and kindness is constantly there for us. It has been from the very beginning. God's love did not fail when the first man and woman brought sin and ruin into his good creation. It does not fail now when this earth groans with the accumulated centuries of the effects of sin. The grace and love of God came personally in his Son, Jesus Christ. Our Lord suffered the pains of being human in a fallen world, even as each one of us does. He faced antagonistic institutions of church and state. More than that, he bore the heavy yoke of the sins and griefs of all humanity. He literally gave his cheek to be struck as he was ridiculed and tortured before going to the cross. He poured out his life to re into death in order to redeem us from hopelessness. His resurrection from the grave is the source of steadfast hope in the face of an uncertain future and even in the face of death. He now lives and is with us, there for us, to the end of the age and beyond. The Lord's mercies are new every morning. Every day is a new day to experience his care. Daily we remember our baptism into Christ's death and resurrection. We belong to him and can count on his loving care. The hope he gives us will be with us as long as we live and at the hour of our death. Take time to remember God's grace and steadfast love in the past, the present, and future. And don't, don't take it for granted. With an unusual phrase, Jeremiah assures us that God's promise of hope will be there for us. It is the Lord is our portion. The word translated portion refers to a gift of grace, not earned or deserved, but given solely because of the favor of the grantor. It is like an inheritance in that it is meant not merited, but bestowed according to the wishes of the giver. God is hopeful. All the best gifts are from him, because in Christ we are included in him. So impatience is more and more prevalent in our world. We Christians can wait on God's promise of hope. Since God and his steadfast love are real, we can be content to wait, anticipate how we will powerfully answer. We lay claim to God's promise of hope by moving, moving through solitude, sitting alone in silence, through repentance, putting our mouth to the dust, through humility, giving our truth to be We move from disillusion to hope in God and in Jesus, to trust in God's wisdom and power Regardless of what our situation might be today, there is cause for real joy because of the hope within us given by God's promise, I will be your portion. So when drastic and dramatic changes frighten and disturb us, let us think on these poetic words. If we look back, we find only the record of much that is wrong. If we look forward, we see only question marks. If we look around us, we 
find only confusion. If we look inside ourselves, we see little reason for confidence. So let us look to the cross and the empty grave, to the Lord who is our portion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. service continues with the prayers of the church.
draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayer, deliver and preserve us. For to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as the table is prepared and offered.
Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup at the supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of sin. The peace of the Lord be with you. Savior Jesus Christ will strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Um.
Savior, Jesus Christ, who will strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen.
your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen.
your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen.
with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Two announcements. Uh, we are going to have the uh, potluck and sing him sing at, uh, at Diamond in School at 6 o'clock for fellowship. And uh, on the way today. And then we're having a, a student meetup, and so all, anyone school age is welcome uh, to come design me from school on July 12th from 1 to 2 30. And um, I think that one, our very own Chris Bobber said he will be doing some art with the students there. So that's July, Friday, July 12th from 1 to 2 30, and that will be in the bulletin next week as well. Thank you. 